Hi, my name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting Group. We're an independent and technology agnostic ERP consulting firm and wanted to share today some of the highlights from our definitive guide to successful Microsoft Dynamics 365 digital transformation. And this guide we've assembled over the last several years of helping clients through their D365 transformations and helping them from that technology agnostic perspective to make their transformations more successful, uh, help them mitigate risk and avoid failure, and ultimately help them realize more value from their D365 transformations. And so really excited to release this to the public as kind of a, a summary of some of those lessons and tips and best practices that we've seen work for our clients that we've recently helped through their uh, D365 transformations. And so just to summarize a couple things to think about that are highlighted here in the guide uh, as it relates to D365 transformations is first of all, the product is very flexible. When you compare D365 to SAP or Oracle or some of the other leading enterprise software systems in the marketplace, D365 is one of the more flexible products, which most people think that's a that's 100% positive thing, that it gives us flexibility to change the software to adapt to our, our business processes and requirements, but that can also be a negative thing too. It, it, it's a double-edged sword because it creates, a, it creates a, a certain amount of cover for people to resist change because all we have to do is change the software and it's easier for us to change the software to fit us. Now with D365's move to the cloud, that's becoming less common uh, today or, or less of an issue because D365 is becoming, uh, with its cloud uh, addition or focus, is becoming slightly less uh, flexible, but compared to other cloud solutions out there, it's still relatively flexible. So we don't want to use its flexibility as an excuse to uh, resist change or to not change our business processes, or really rethink how we do business and make sure we're getting the most out of the technologies that's there. So that's the first thing is the flexibility of the product is one thing that is tricky to navigate. It's a double-edged sword and something we want to make sure we, we plan around. The second thing that's unique to D365 implementations compared to other products that we help our clients with is that the VAR or the value-added reseller and system integrator and partner network is very fragmented. There are a ton of different mom and pop uh, solutions out there, ranging from you know a couple of guys or gals out of their garage to some larger uh, organizations that are supporting D365. And some of those uh, VARs or resellers have added their own intellectual property and bolt-ons or, or uh, configurations of D365 that are unique to certain industries or certain types of situations. So again, it provides you a breadth of options and a lot of different ways to leverage services uh, from some of these technical experts to help you deploy the software. But that too is a double-edged sword because not all system integrators and resellers are created equally. In fact, I, I would say, or I would argue that Microsoft's ecosystem and its network of partners and implementers is probably one of the more or, or less regulated um, uh, ecosystems out there. What I mean by regulated is it's, it's somewhat of a free-for-all. I mean, it, just about anyone can go out and start uh, a D365 shop and there's not a whole lot of oversight and not a whole lot of uh, level playing field in terms of uh, identifying who the, who the good ones are and who the, the uh, less good ones are. So that's the second thing, are the bars are fragmented. And then the third thing that we have to think about with D365 implementations is that there's a certain amount of maturity that's lacking with D365 that that previous Microsoft ERP users might not be comfortable with. So companies that are used to great planes or Xapta or Navision or one of those legacy products may not be comfortable with the level of maturity that you're seeing in D365 simply because it hasn't been around as long. And also with companies that are familiar with Microsoft's legacy ERP products, there's not a whole lot of clarity on what you're actually getting with D365 versus what you might've had with Great Plains, Division, Exapta, et cetera. So those are three of the, at a real high level, three of the things we cover in the guide that are worth, worth thinking about and that we wanna, wanna focus on. Now, one of the other things that we cover in the guide is how to plan for a Microsoft uh, D365 implementation project. And there's a whole section in the guide that talks about what we need to do to plan to develop a realistic um, time and cost to define a phasing strategy that makes the most sense for you and understand the magnitude of, of change that you're willing to go through uh, as a result of, of your implementation. And these are things that are really important to, to lay out up front to make sure that before you just start implementing stuff, 
you have a clear vision for what you want to get from the software and you have a clear plan to get there. So that's another component of what's covered in this, this guide. It gives you some tips on how to, how to navigate the whole, the whole planning process, as well as how to address resources, organizational change management, um, the overall uh, transition strategy and plan, et cetera. So a lot of good stuff that's, that's built into this guide that will help provide some of that, that clarity. Now, another aspect to consider as it relates to your D365 implementation is just having a realistic view of implementation time and cost. So the previous section just talked about how to create the plan, but here's how do we, how do we estimate the overall duration, resource commitments, and, and total cost of ownership uh, for the project. And one of the big problems that we see with D365 deployments is twofold. One is that uh, because the product is relatively flexible and easy to use compared to other ERP systems out there, there's a misunderstanding or a misperception that it's gonna be a lot easier and cheaper to implement. And the reality is we still have to change our people, we still have to change our processes, we still have to figure out how this all ties together, uh, links to other systems. So most of the heavy lifting that goes along with a D365 project is still there. And the fact that the software is easy to use helps, but it doesn't have a material impact or as material of an impact on the implementation time and cost as, as many customers uh, think, or in the case of VARs and system integrators, um, in many cases, they underestimate the amount of effort, time, and cost that it's going to take as well. So that's that's an important aspect is to have some objective, objective and agnostic benchmarks to help you figure out what the right duration and cost is going to be for your deployment. That's a key success factor for uh, these types of projects. And another component that is covered in this guide as well that's really important to successful D365 implementation is to make sure that you find the best D365 system integrator for you. And as I mentioned before, the system integrators are not all created equally in this space and there's a huge variation ranging, ranging from some really good ones to some ones that aren't so good and, and a lot in between. And the key here is really to find the one that's the best fit for you in terms of the skills that you're looking for and that you need for your transformation. Uh, cultural fit is very important. Uh, the ability to support and scale with your organization is another component of this. And one of the big challenges that we see with D365 system integrators more so, even more so than other types of implementations like with SAP and Oracle, is that for some reason, the system integrators in the D365 space tend to shoot from the hip a bit more than what we see in other, other implementations. And D365 and Microsoft promotes uh, the sure step methodology. So they have a framework for implementing D365, but the actual usage of that methodology and the tool sets varies greatly. And I think it seems like a lot of the system integrators and bars that we've worked with and that we've had experience with over the years, their instincts and their tendencies are to shoot from the hip and just to kind of wing it along the way. So one of the things that we, always encourage our clients to do and that we help our clients do during their transformations is to help provide some structure and governance to the overall project, which is important for any digital transformation, but even more so for D365, simply because of that dynamic that I described with, with the system integrators. Now, a couple other things, and, and one thing that's related, also related to system integrators, is the system integrators are not the silver bullet you're looking for. A lot of times companies think, picked a great product in D365, uh, we found a system integrator, now we're gonna outsource this whole thing, kind of push it off to them and let them do their thing. And unfortunately, system integrators don't have all the capabilities you're gonna need to make your project successful. And this is something that applies, I would say, to most D365 VARs and system integrators, as well as SAP and Oracle system integrators and VARs as well, by the way. And so we wanna make sure that we have the right program management, governance, controls, and really just the, the oversight and management of those system integrators because they're typically because they're typically shooting from the hip, they're typically not good at keeping a, a good pulse on time, resources, cost. Um, they're spending your money, not theirs, so it becomes uh, a situation where you end up holding the bag if things go over time or over budget. So you really wanna make sure you have a, a good governance, some good controls, and some good program management in place to help manage those resources as well as your internal resources and any other third party resources you might have. The other component that's important to think about is there's a lot of things the system integrators don't do along the lines of organizational change. They might be able to help you train to use the software or train the trainers, but they're typically not gonna be extremely good at uh, 
providing the more strategic change management around how we're going to redesign jobs and the organizational design and how we're going to improve our processes and roll out those process changes to the organization. And since they're not good at those things, uh, that, that's something that needs to be plugged, especially because those things I just mentioned are things that are ultimately going to make this project successful and help you realize the business value from it. So it's really important that we plug the, plug the holes, fill the gaps with what uh, the system integrator uh, typically isn't good at doing. And along those lines, I mentioned organizational change management. We have a section in the guide that talks about some of the lessons around organizational change strategies and the things that you want to make sure you include in your change management plan. There's a lot of things there that go well beyond training and uh, just simple transactional training, which is typically what the system integrators focus on with their change management efforts. Beyond that, we also have to look at how is the organizational design going to look? What are job roles and responsibilities going to look like? How are we going to implement those changes? How are we going to change our culture now uh, if we're rolling out a D365 product? Chances are we're creating, whether we like it or not, or intend to or not, we're creating a more flexible, uh, nimble environment that's intended to, to automate our processes, but also give us some certain amount of flexibility to meet customer needs and to provide internal innovation and all that good stuff. So that stuff doesn't just happen automatically because we deploy a product like D365. We have to figure out how we're going to let our culture evolve into that so we can fully leverage some of those capabilities and benefits. So uh, the organizational change uh, piece is, is critical. And another piece that we need to be thinking about is the implementation readiness side of things. So from the time we've selected the software, maybe we've even selected the system integrator by now, what is it we do from that point until we start implementing? And that, that point right there, that phase that we call implementation readiness from the time you're ready to go until you actually do start implementing, that is critical. And too many companies just skip over that or just roll right through that pretty quickly. And what that does is it creates a lot of problems if we don't address some of the core fundamental problems that lead to failure or success, depending on how well we, we address these areas. Things like how well aligned are we on what our processes are going to look like and what the goals and objectives of this project are. Um, do we have the right resourcing? Do we have a clear roadmap and blueprint for how we're going to deploy the software? The system integrator may have their view of how this is going to be. They may have their plan, but that's just one piece of the plan. We've got to figure out for us as an organization, what are all the things that we need to do to get ready to build that foundation, that blueprint for the overall transformation. The better job we do in that implementation readiness phase, the better job we're going to be able to implement quickly. Uh, more effectively, more efficiently, and ultimately we're going to save a lot more time and money in the, in the long run with that uh, focus on implementation readiness. So it may be tempting to say, well, rather than spend several weeks or a few months on implementation readiness, we'll cut that from the plan and we'll just jump right into designing and building stuff. Every time company, we've seen companies do that, they end up spinning their wheels so much later on that they should have just spent that time up front to get it right. It may feel like you're slowing things down and in some ways you are slowing things down in the short term but you're getting your game plan together. You've got the foundation to where you can run a lot more effectively later on uh, throughout the project. Now, finally, the, the, one of the last pieces that are covered in this guide, and I'm not covering everything, by the way, but I want to highlight some of the key things that are covered in the guide to successful D365 deployment is quality assurance. So how do we ensure that we're identifying risks and mitigating those risks along the way? And it goes along with the concept that we talked about earlier, which is, System integrators are not the silver bullet that you're looking for. They can't do everything, and you, they have to be managed just like any other resource on your project. So what we've outlined in this guide that you, you may find, in, find of interest is this QA and assessment framework um, that we use with our clients that uh, gives us certain, certain areas or different lenses that we assess and analyze where the risks are and what should be done at this point, any given point in a project. And this whole QA assessment framework allows us to do that. So that's something that's spelled out in greater detail in the guide. So I encourage you to download the guide, um, which I've included a link at the bottom of this video in the, in the info fields um, that you can go to our website and download on the third stage site. So this is in a nutshell what is covered here in the guide. It's 31 pages of, of good stuff that, that outlines all the best practices that you need to make your project successful. Um, I'd encourage you to, to download it. You can download this guide in its entirety uh, by clicking the link below in the YouTube field or the, the info field of our YouTube uh, page here. Um, so feel free to download that. And speaking of YouTube channel, if you're watching this on YouTube or social media, I encourage you to go to YouTube to not only download the guide, um, to click through to this video and download the guide in the description field, 
but also to su subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel to get updates on this and other content that we put out there. So hope you found this helpful and uh, feel free to reach out to me with questions. If you want to bounce around ideas on your D365 project, what you need to do to get ready, feel free to shoot me an email. I've included my email address in the description box of this video on YouTube as well. So hope you all have a great day. Hope this is helpful and we'll look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care.